Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We talked about AR, we talked about VR, and now we're going to talk, and we talked about AI. Now it's the turn of emotional intelligence um, with Maeve Quarren, the CEO of the Foresight Factory. Maeve, this is something you've been doing a session on today, and it's something that very much your company is, is leading the way in and is very excited by. Uh, very much so. We're a consumer analytics business. We deal in predictive trends, and we've been predicting as well in certainly the extent to which we can carry out emotional intelligence and interest in the topic for uh, a while now. Uh, I've been fascinated to see the uh, signals that are coming onto the marketplace just grow and grow. You know, you think of something really simple and basic like the rise of the emoticon cartoons that, you know, act in a very simple way as a proxy, at least some of the time for how we feel, what we think, how we interact with brands. And we've seen massive growth in that. Uh, and we're predicting huge growth again. You know, the number of people who engage with uh, emojis on a very frequent basis, multiple times a day, is already 32% of the global population. And that will double in the next year. So there's, you know, and that's just one of so many different signals we could read. So it's all coming together. And I think what we got very excited about for the event was the fact that we've now got some really new and interesting ways where we can measure some of those signals uh, and, and do something really critical with it. So for the event, we pioneered a piece of work. We did a study with a partner agency called Sunsum, um, and it took us to some really fantastic results. You know, we, we were able to prove without a shadow of a doubt that you know, it's emotions that drive brand advocacy. And while you need a very functional basis for your brand, emotional just takes you to a whole other level of engagement. And, you know, we've started to get into territory beyond just, say, the emotional arc that we've all become so good at in terms of advertising delivery. You know, how else do we use that sort of stuff to bring product to life, to drive engagement through other channels? So that's what we've been doing. And, and I'm happy to say we had a great session on stage today. How do you see it moving forward then? How do you think we will be using it in, in the very near future? Well, I think there's some simple stuff that needs to be done. You know, I think brands have uh, essentially always been the architects of their own destiny, and, and rightly so. But I think it's quite clear at this point that actually it's only the consumer and the consumer alone that decides you know, who they want to identify with and, and why that is. So I think the first thing that brands are starting to do differently now is figure out what sort of emotional territory they've got, what naturally drives advocacy in their sector, but then especially in terms of how that sits with their competitive set. So, you know, right now we can see a whole bunch of attributes or areas that, you know, work well for a particular brand. Problem is all of our competitors are playing in the same territory. So we can actually help people isolate what's really, really unique for them. And then I think the thing that'll come next is using trends and clues in terms of what their strong advocate groups, where their fan base lies, and where they'll go next. And, and we've got some predictive capability around that. So it's, it's, it's really, really new, this stuff. And essentially, today was about getting people excited about the art of the possible, rather than you know a, a reality that we've been living with. So. And there was talk about it being or helping to, to inspire a revolution in, in marketing. Do you think it could go that far? Absolutely. You know, I think we're, we're drowning in data. Uh, and we're drowning in brand priorities. And, you know, I think the stakes have never been higher. And I think the uh, piece that is following, you know, what's relevant for the customer is just so complex. So many channels, so many signals, so many ways to decode. So uh, our view is that actually some of this allows you to cut through the mass of data you need to interpret. And I'm not saying that needs to go away. Um, but actually make some real decisions about where to put your marketing spend. You know, we could see from some of the base level work that we've done, you know, clear territory that drives advocacy and clear territory that distracts it. So things like, you know, loyalty programs, for instance, brilliant in terms of commercial performance for some, not great in terms of using that to drive advocacy. So clearly don't put your advertising spend in there. So, you know, I think there are clues here that will give people confidence to go and do something different, narrow down where their focus is, and actually measure it in ways that, that just weren't possible before. So yeah, I think it's really exciting. This is obviously at the, the cutting edge of innovation in this particular field. I wanted to ask you about that a bit more widely. What, what do you think it means to be truly innovative in terms of your particular industry and what you do? 
Well, I think it's, uh, there are a couple of values that I would associate with that, you know, agile and fast, very much uh, front of mind because I think just it's just so easy for others to a adopt the same pattern and I see that time and time again. To me, what's really important is actually relevancy because the volume of innovation has never been so great. Being relevant is the part that's hard. And I think the third layer for me is actually doing something that's really human. So I have the greatest respect for, and in fact, we want to be using machine learning, AI, all of the things that sort of power up the intelligence faster. But actually, unless you have a really core human understanding that is coming in and blending with that, I, I just think you lose people. So to me, innovation is the perfect combination of those three pillars. And tell me what's next for your particular company, the Foresight Factory. Well, uh, <laughs> the most immediate thing is we started with that particular study using a specific implicit response testing methodology, which Sensum helped us develop. And we just started for this particular piece on the automotive industry. And I have to say, the results are fantastic. And, you know, please go have people should come check out the report for free on our website, shameless plug. Uh, but the next thing is looking at where that analysis takes us further. So we, we can do a lot of stuff around uh, different demographic plays, young people, old people, um, and mostly other sectors as well. In terms of Foresight Factory more broadly, you know, the business of predictive trends has never been uh, more exciting. We're working on essentially the perfect blend of algorithm and human understanding and, and you know, all the different ways that we can do that. Um, and we've got some exciting shall we say, detective work uh, that will lie in the year ahead for us. Finally, we don't mind shameless plugs here. It, it okay. is Ad, Ad Week Europe after all. <laughs> Tell us where people can go to. Give us your web address if they want to explore so, this further. Uh, brilliant. And thank you for that perfect question. Uh, foresightfactory.co and then uh, search for emotional intelligence. There's a URL strictly. It'll take people directly to that. Thank you very much for your time this afternoon thank and enjoy Andy. the rest of Ad Week Europe. Pleasure. Okay, go to that website, have a look and keep talking to us. Hashtag AW Europe.